So uh, this is a very strong start for your first film. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Tell me all about um, you know, this story. It's your own story. And how long have you been wanting to talk about this? Well, I guess I started writing about it. Uh, I feel like I started writing about it 20 years ago. I wrote scenes, and I have always sort of been interested in the writing about my father. Um, and then I had children of my own, and I saw everything differently. And so I, I, I just wanted to write a portrait of a, a man. I wanted to write a movie about a man who struggles with mental illness but humanized this person, and someone who's loved and who loves his family. And um, I thought that that was a story that needed to be told. And uh, when you put all this movie together and the casting, did you do a lot of the casting yourself? And do you have people in mind? And how, how did that go? Um, I, in writing it, I did not have people in mind. I tried to really just stick to my memories and the, of, the, of the real people because I was trying to capture these uh, real people. Um, then, once I'd finished the script, it was sent when it, it was sent to Mark Ruffalo, who from You Can Count on Me, I felt like he understood a lot of the issues that I was writing about, and also. Um, could play it in a very real way. He's got those great soulful eyes. <laughs> and he read it, he really responded to it. And um, we, got, we met and I just knew that he, I mean, he was funny. He was funny, I could see that he was a good father. Those were the qualities I was really looking for. He didn't have some of the other qualities that the character has, such as being from the sort of Boston Brahmin blue blood family, but I thought that would be really fun as an, to, to, bring, to have him perform. I mean, that was something he hadn't done before. Zoe was similar in that when she read the script, she said, I'm laughing and crying on every page. And both of them understood the life that I would, the, the, the life in it, the fact that I was going for something that was not, that was not a, a really sad story about a sad topic, but that had a lot of humor in it and a lot of warmth. And your daughter plays um, like your version. A version of, of me. me, yes, a, a way better version of me. <laughs> <laughs> how, how was that, like just, you know, directing her and all of that? And it was bizarre. I haven't, I can't even, I mean, it was so strange that I haven't even thought about it that much. I mean, I haven't analyzed it. It was just this thing we did, this thing we did that she'll write about in 40 years. <laughs> but it was always, was it hard to like just uh, to not talk about the movie when you're, you know, offset or? So the thing that was really the strangest thing was that I was, uh, I, there wasn't, see, we were on different schedules. We were living in the same house, but. I left early in the morning. I came back late at night. I missed her all the time. You know, she was she, she needed her sleep, so there wasn't that much time to um, talk about it because I was so busy. Which I felt I was like I was I was not being the the most attentive mother in the world. I think I was a good director for her at that time, but maybe not the best mother. With the one thing I remember, once we went to the library, we both fell asleep in a chair on the on Sunday. Uh, we fell asleep in this chair in the library for two hours in public. <laughs> <laughs> that says it all. That was how that was how we bonded. <laughs> and for my last question, uh, what do you have coming next? What's your future projects? I, uh, my husband and I have written a movie for uh, Jack Black, actually, that's based on a real life story about a, a man who came from Poland, became a polka sensation in Pennsylvania, and also ran a Ponzi scheme. So it's a it's a true life crime comedy with a lot of singing and dancing and crazy costumes. <laughs>